Hey what's up guys and welcome to my new video. So today I want to show you how to turn your TV into a smart TV and as you can see I have this quite old Toshiba LCD here which is not a smart TV but today I want to show you how to turn this device here into a smart TV and now I will show you what you need for this. So therefore you will need a Android mini PC stick and you can use any mini PC stick you want to but I can really recommend the Zero Devices set for C Quattro because it's one of the fastest and cheapest mini PC sticks available. You can buy this for only $80 at the link in the description. It's asiapads.com, a really great seller, so be sure to check it out. Okay, then now let's take a look at the set for C Quattro. So this is the top side. We have here massive ventilation holes to keep the system cool. And also here on the right side, a USB OTG port. Then here on this side, we have a mini HDMI port, so you can easily attach this device to your PC monitor or to your home TV. Then here on this side we can see a micro SD card bay, so you can upgrade your internal memory up to 32GB. Also we see here a sticker which says that this device has 2GB of RAM, so this is really much for a mini PC. And here we also have the Asia Pads warranty seal, so here you can make sure that you get a brand new device. Then here on the left side we can see a mini USB port to power up the whole system, and on the right side we have a big USB 2.0 port to attach peripherals. And here on the back side we have massive ventilation holes which prevent overheating, so this is a fanless design, so you need to have those ventilation holes to keep the system cool and prevent overheating like on other mini PCs. And AsiaPads.com provides a really nice multifunction hub, so this isn't only a USB hub and I will show you now the functions. So here on the top side we have three big USB 2.0 ports, so you can attach two more devices because this USB hub only needs one USB port. Then here on the other side of the hub you also have here a little power connector to power the hub if you attach devices which drain too much power. And here we have an Ethernet port, so you can turn your USB port into an Ethernet port and this is fully supported by the Z4C Quattro. So before we can connect it, we have to attach the mini HDMI to big HDMI adapter cable which comes with the set for c Quattro. Now we can connect the big HDMI connector to any free HDMI port on our TV. Now we take the power connector and connect it to the mini USB port on this side of the mini PC to power it up. Here on the back side of the mini PC you can see a little LED which indicates that the mini PC is turned on. If you also have the Quattro USB hub, you can now attach it to any free USB port on your mini PC. And now we'll connect some peripherals to the USB hub, so I have here this receiver for my wireless mouse, then there's also a receiver for my wireless keyboard, and then there's one free USB port where I can attach hard drives or a USB drive. And also if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, you can attach now your Ethernet cable. Okay, so this is my final setup, so here in the middle the set for c Quattro, on the top we have a HDMI connector cable to connect it to the TV, here on the bottom side we have a charging cable, this is connected to the charger and here on the right side we have the Quattro USB hub. And now I want to show you some possibilities on how to control your mini PC. So here you can see some devices and all of them can be used to control your mini PC. We have here this wireless mouse here, then here we have a wireless keyboard, it's a great keyboard, there's also a review on my channel. Then here on the right side we have a PS3 6-axis controller which can be connected by USB or Bluetooth for gaming. And then here we have a smartphone running Android which can also be used as a remote for the mini PC using a free app called Droid Mode. Okay, so now everything is connected to my TV and all we have to do is switch to the HDMI source where the mini PC is connected to and then we can see the home screen. Okay, so we're now here on the mini PC and this is the home screen. So by default you have here on the top a Google search bar, voice search, a clock widget and here on the bottom you have some shortcuts like browser, play store, email, main menu, file explorer, videos and settings. And here also on the bottom you have a bar which stays on your screen the whole time. So you can see your Wi-Fi connection, the current time, some opened up applications, also here is my screen recorder which I'm using right now. Then here on the left side you have some buttons which you can see the whole time, like power off your device, take screenshots or adjust the volume, so you can adjust the volume in a game or in a movie. And here we also have opened applications, so you can switch through them. And here we have a bring to front and a back button. And here we also have several pages where you can place apps or widgets. So this is just like on your smartphone. And now let's go to the main menu and check out the apps. So this is the main menu of the mini PC. And here we have apps and widgets. So here you can choose the widgets which you want to have on your home screen. Then here we have all the apps which are currently installed. But before we go through them, let's take a look at the settings. So here we have wireless and networks. So here you can turn on or off the Wi-Fi connection. 
and Wi-Fi is currently enabled and I'm also connected to my home network and as you can see the signal quality is perfect and the router is one room under me so this is very good and even better than on my iPad. Also I can find the network of my neighbor. Then here on the left side you can activate Bluetooth so you can switch it to on or off and here you should also see available devices so if you want to connect it to your phone for instance. Then here we have Ethernet. So if you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, all you have to do is activate Ethernet, connect the Ethernet cable to your USB hub and there you go. Then you should see your MAC address, IP address and you can also set a static IP. So here we have data usage, so you can see the data consumption of every single app, but this is mostly for smartphones. Then here we have more like VPN, a portable hotspot to turn your um, mini PC into a Wi-Fi router and PPoA. So here we have USB settings, so if you want to connect to PC, just tick this box here. Then here we also have sound settings so you can adjust the volumes and also your notification sounds if you want to change them for instance for email. Then here we have display so here you can adjust the wallpaper of the home screen and here you can choose some wallpapers from gallery, live wallpapers and also the standard Android wallpapers which you can see here. Just go to set wallpaper and there you go. And this mini PC is also very fast so there is no problem if you want to run live wallpapers and they also don't lag, um, they are just a little bit laggy with the screen recorder. Then here we have screen scale, so here you can scale the screen exactly to the size of your monitor or TV. Here we also have output interface, so the only output interface this device has is HDMI. Then here you can also switch through HDMI modes. So um, that's also full HD, but currently I only run it in 720p because the screen recorder does not support full HD, but full HD works like a charm on this device, it's not even laggy or something, really great. Then here we have internal storage, so the total space here is 2GB plus 6GB of NAND flash, and this results in a total available space of about 5 to 7 gigabytes. And here we also have the SD card, so you can attach SD cards up to 32 gigabytes. So here we have apps, so here you can see all downloaded and installed apps, also which are on the SD card and also which apps are currently running. Then here we have security settings, so make passwords visible. Also here unknown sources, if you want to install APK files then you have to tick it, so it's also possible to install APKs. Then here we have language and input, so you can adjust the display language to every language you want to. And we also have here keyboard and input methods, so there are several input methods like the Android on-screen keyboard in all languages, Google Voice typing, a 6-axis controller or just use a wireless keyboard. Then here we have backup and reset, so you can backup your data or do a factory reset. And here we have accounts, so my device is synced with my Google account, but you can add every account you want to, like corporate, email, Facebook, Google, Skype or even WhatsApp. Then here we have date and time, so set it automatically or you can set it manually if you want to. Here we also have dev options, so everything is unlocked here. And we also have here about device, where you can see some information about device. So it's the set for c Quattro running Android 4.2.2. Okay, so basically that was everything here in settings and now let's go back to the menu. And let's do a little Antutu benchmark to see how fast the device is. So as you can see this device scores about 18Ks here in Antutu and this is not a bad score and if we go to ranking we can see how it compares to other devices. So if we take a look at this we can see that it is on the performance level of the Galaxy S3 or the Google Nexus 10 so somewhere um, between those devices. And here we can also see some hardware details so here we have a fast quad core CPU which is currently running at 1.6 GHz which is also overclockable. Then here we have solid 2 GB of RAM which ensure super multitasking. Then here we also have a GPU which is the Mali 400 MP which provides good gaming and full HD output. And here under I.O. it detects only 2 GB so maybe this also affects the score a little bit so you maybe would have a little bit more score. Ok so now let's close the Antutu benchmarking tool and now let's take a look at the Google Play Store. So as I said this is a full Android device and therefore you can install apps from the Google Play Store. So now let's open it up. Then let's go back to the main screen. So as you can see this is the full Google Play Store so here you can install every app or game you want to. And now let's try this. Here we have um, I don't know Tor. So if you want to install this app here, just click at it and go to install. This works with every app so there are no problems because this mini PC is detected as a tablet device. Okay, so now the app is installing, but there's also a way to install apps without an internet connection. Therefore you will need this APK installer, which comes pre-installed on a device. So here you can install APK files, all you have to do is download them on your computer and copy them to your internal memory, SD card or to a USB drive. 
and then you can install the apps right here in the APK installer. So now let's take a look at the browser. So here we have the standard Android browser, but I prefer Google Chrome, but you can install every browser you want to. And now let's wait for the page to load up. So this is xbox.com and as you can see the page loads up without any problem and you can also scroll through the page with your mouse wheel just like on the PC. Also if you want to enter a new web page just use your wireless keyboard and then you can enter it or you can also use the on-screen keyboard and as you can see this is much easier than on real smart TVs because on real smart TVs you have to do all this stuff here with your remote and you also have a shitty browser and if you also have um, such a um, wireless magic mouse then you will notice that also this is much more complicated than using a mouse and the keyboard. Then here we have a big clock so you could also use this as a alarm clock if you have a TV in your bedroom. Then here we have some gamer install, downloads, eHome Media Center. Here we have emails so you can always check all your email accounts. Here we have a file explorer which is one important thing because here you can browse your whole internal flash, your SD card, USB devices, um, SATA devices and your network places. So let's start here with the internal flash. So if you click at this you can see all the files and folders which are currently on your internal flash. Then here you can also browse your SD card and here we have USB devices so let me try to connect the USB stick. So you can attach the USB drive or USB stick to any free USB port. So let me try this here right now. Okay, other side and here we go. Now the mini PC should detect the USB drive and as you can see USB mass storage prepared. And now you can browse all the folder and files which are on the USB drive and you can now play music, play videos or watch pictures. And as you can see I'm playing here right now a video from me and it's very smooth also scrolling here through the video without any lags and this also works in full HD. Then here we have network places so here you can browse the network for shared files and folders so this also works. Then here in the main menu we further have on um, Facebook so this also works. Then um, further here we have the gallery so you can take a look at all your pictures and videos and this is really great if you want to show them to friends then just take your mini PC and attach it to their TV. So pretty simple and pretty cool. Here we have Gmail and all the Google functions and then we also have Google Maps so let's open it up. And it also um, works that you see your location but this isn't from GPS because this device does not have GPS but it takes your location from your internet connection. And here, as you can see, it works pretty good. You can scroll over the whole map, zoom in, zoom out, or plan your route. Then here we have the Android Music Player. So here you can play your whole music on the TV, but you could also install a custom music player. So this is the standard one. But just if you want another one, just install a custom music player from the Google Play Store. Then here we have contacts, so you can also manage them here. We have the Play Store like you've seen before. And this device comes pre-rooted, so let's try to run the root checker. Let's verify root access and as you can see, congratulations, this device has root access. Okay, then here we have search, settings, my 6-axis PS3 controller app and we also have here Skype. So Skype comes also pre-installed on this device. All you have to do is just log in and then you can chat. The only thing which you can't do is video chat because this device does not have a camera. Then here we have Google Talk, the app we installed before here, video, voice search and also WhatsApp. Also WhatsApp works on this device, um, it just works like for tablets so you have to activate it with a little trick. Then we also have here XBMC, so Xbox Media Center. And some people ask me if this device is strong enough to run it in full HD and also to stream videos and music. And what I can say, yes, it's strong enough, I've tested it and there are no lags or anything. So this device is pretty fast and it runs XBMC in full HD. Then last but not least we have here YouTube and here you can see one of my favorite channels, it's Hickok45. That old guy is so fucking crazy and since I'm also a gun owner I really like his videos. So let's try to play one video here from him. Um, I don't know, let's take this one with the deagle. There was just a little issue with the screen recorder when you watch a video. Because if you watch a video and you record the screen at the same time and you watch um, the recording then um, it plays the video a little bit too fast I think. And as you can see here, but at the device itself, the video playback is very smooth and not laggy. And this is really great here on this device. And you can also use all the YouTube functions, like you can scroll through the comments. You can also comment using the on-screen keyboard or your wireless keyboard. Then let's try out some games. So here we have Angry Birds. And you can play this here on screen with your mouse. So this is pretty cool. So let's try this. Okay, so we're now in the game and now let's go to play and start it. So here we go. I don't really like Angry Birds, so I don't play this very often, but let's try it. And here we go. 
and you can use the mouse like the finger on your smartphone and shoot here and as you can see this works pretty well so there are no lags or something. So Angry Birds isn't a game which needs much CPU and GPU performance but now let's test out a little game which needs really much CPU and GPU performance and this game is called Dead Trigger. So now let's go back to the main menu and check out the app. But before we start the game we want to um, pair our PS3 controller with the mini PC. So for um, some games you can use your PS3 controller to play and this is really great. It's like a console on your TV. And if you want to connect the PS3 controller to your mini PC all you have to do is make sure that the 6-axis controller is here as default input method. And you also have to run a little app which is not free so it's a paid app but it's a really great app because all you have to do is just do one click and then your controller is paired with the mini PC. And this app is called 6-axis controller. So let's open it up. And now all we have to do is just go to start, then it will ask you for root access, but this device comes pre-rooted so all you have to do is go to grant, then you go to pair controller, and then your controller is paired with the mini PC and then you can play. So you can also set this to default. Okay, so now let's go to the game and see if it works. So here we go, that trigger starting up right now. And you can also see that it is a fast device because you can record the screen and play this awesome game at the same time. So now let's go to play and I have um, pre-configured the PS3 controller so now it should work with the controller so let's try this and here we go. So with the screen recorder it's a little bit laggy but I will also upload some gameplays without the screen recorder and film it with my camera but as you can see this works pretty good here with the PS3 controller and also if you don't record the screen it is really fast and there are no lags and you can play this also in full HD on your TV. So this is pretty awesome, it's like a console so you have a little bit of a console feeling on your TV for just 80 bucks. Okay, and this was also the last thing we have tested here on this device. Mission success! So this was my video on how to turn your TV into a smart TV. I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions just feel free to ask and leave a comment under this video. So I can really recommend the Zero Devices set for C Quattro. It's a great device, it is cheap and it's very fast. And the link to the seller as always is in the description so just be sure to check it out. So as always, thanks for watching and I hope I see you again in my next videos. Bye guys!